The terms swing path and swing plane are sort of used interchangeably. Uh, most people feel that they sort of mean much the same thing. But there's a lot of confusion about where the club should go and how you can monitor the movement. And if you're one of those people, watch this video. I'll show you an easy way to not only know where the club should move or what the swing plane should be, but how to achieve it. So what I've set up on the ground here, as you'll see from the line, is a, a rope line. Now imagine my ball is sitting, say, just on the side of the rope there. My rope's aiming toward my target. When I set myself up, the bottom of my shaft is pointed straight to the rope. Now let's pretend this rope extends indefinitely in both directions. And I've got a light shining at the end of the shaft, at the head end and the grip end. When I set myself up, the, sh the light shining out the head end of the shaft is pointing to the rope, which represents my target line, the line running between the ball and the target. As I begin my backswing, that light is tracing a line along the rope. So it doesn't go back straight because now the light would be pointed out there. It doesn't swing behind me because the rope would be pointed in here. So the, rope's po uh, the light's pointed to the rope all the time I'm swinging back until the club gets to where it's parallel to the ground. Now when it's parallel to the ground, the light shining out either end of the shaft is parallel to the rope. As I continue back, the light shining out the grip end of the rope points to the rope or an extension of the rope and continues to trace along it all the way back to the top of my swing. And then in the downswing, it's going to reverse. The light points to the rope until it's parallel to it. Now the head end of the shaft, or the light coming out the head end of the shaft points to the rope all the way down and all the way through impact. So as my club's swinging through, I'm keeping the light either shining along the rope there or it's parallel to it. So that's the first part of it. That's how, but the second part is how we're going to achieve that. If I hold the club just in my fingertips and then as soon as I start to, uh, to move back because I, I don't have the strength in my fingertips to pick it up and make any sort of uh, free movement with it, the club will sort of lag a little bit. But again, this is a drill, but this is for demonstration purposes. So if we're watching from down the line there, all I'm going to do is hold the club in my thumb and forefinger, both hands, and then just rotate my body away from the target and then back through. And what you will have seen with that motion there is that the, the club swinging freely is actually staying on that path that I described earlier. Or if it's not, it's very, very close to it. So the easiest way for me to get the club to swing back correctly is to make it a swinging motion. So now when I'm holding the club and I keep my wrists and my arms really, really light so that as I'm moving my body, just small movements here, the club is sort of trailing my arms. My arms are sort of moving with my body or trailing my body, but there's a freedom here through my shoulders the whole time. Now, if I start to make that movement bigger, watching from down the line there, you'll see that the club wants to orbit. And I'm using the word orbit rather than using the word make it go somewhere. Because as soon as I start to add tension or start to add manipulative movement with my arms and my hands, the club's not going to go where it should go. So again, nice free motions back and down and through. And I'm trying to keep that orbiting movement. All right, let's hit a ball and see how close we can get to that orbiting movement. So the freer the motion is, the easier it's going to be to reproduce. So practice that movement, holding the club, maybe don't hold the club in your fingertips, but hold it as lightly as if you're holding the club in your fingertips. Keep the manipulative movements out of the swing, both backswing and downswing, and I'm sure you'll find that the path of the club's gonna work a whole lot better. Even doing what I'm doing here, reference it with something on the ground, whether it's a rope or just a straight line of some description, and you'll find that you'll have much, much better control of the movement of the shaft, which is going to be critical for controlling your direction.